Let me ask you about um, the diamond market, the collapse that we've seen there. What kind of recovery, what shape do you expect? Uh, thank you. Um, we would expect to see uh, the fourth quarter start to pick up. If you look at what we've seen in China, you almost couldn't sell a diamond in the first quarter. Yet in May and June, we've seen our best numbers for over 18 months. So from our point of view, May and June, very strong. We'd expect that trend to continue. The US, we expect, will take longer to come out of the COVID uh, issues. So we don't expect the US numbers to materially move, probably until Thanksgiving through to Christmas and New Year. So probably a fourth quarter story into 2021. Uh, good morning. Partly what's going on with De Beers is that there's no um, urgency to really cut these prices y yet. How long can you take that? How long could De Beers not cut these prices? Because the diamonds were clearly the biggest drag on your earnings report. Well, you've got to remember, diamonds are a luxury product. And uh, from our point of view, they are rare. They're in demand, as we're seeing in China. And so from our point of view, we would prefer to cut production than cut prices on something that is as rare as a diamond. And so from our point of view, better off holding back our production and make sure that we match demand at the right price for the product than undercut the value of our product, which we think is undervalued in any case. So uh, from our point of view, big pickup in diamonds in uh, China. We'd expect the rest of the world to follow as it comes out of COVID or certainly resets around uh, a different type of world. And so we don't think there's an argument that supports cutting the prices. I wonder what you think about the um, less glitzy materials, but maybe more important, <laughs> certainly more important for the global economy that you're pulling out of the ground. Iron ore and copper are, you know, the building blocks of civilization. So you have an incredibly interesting outlook uh, as to how the COVID crisis has hit the economy. And I wonder what your take is for the recovery in terms of what you see selling these products. Well, certainly China, uh, the recovery in China has been strong. So we see more of a V recovery there. In other parts of the world, we're probably going to be seeing more of a W type recovery. But the demand for iron ore has been very good. So for us, diamond uh, iron ore has been sparkling. Uh, copper's been strong. Uh, nickel is starting to wake up, and we've missed uh, Musk making his pronouncements about the world being short for nickel. That's been helpful. Uh, PGMs has also been very, very strong. So from our point of view, all of those commodities have been good performers in terms of price, and we'd expect the second half to be very strong in all three. And so we're very well positioned, and we can be a little more patient on diamonds. So you're not seeing right now China running out of steam at all for the rest of the year? Uh, not at this stage. In fact, our order books are pretty full uh, in terms of the, co the commodities that we provide. But I still think things will be bumpy, um, but certainly generally pretty strong and they're managing things pretty well. Uh, I think things will be slower recovering in other parts of the world. And we're seeing that with the COVID numbers across the globe, US obviously. Uh, but again, we also think that the US will get through and we would hope by the fourth quarter we'd be starting to see daylight. For your business specifically, Mark, you're facing more competition from Rio Tinto. It's pushing ahead with plans to build um, a, a, an iron ore mine in Guinea that competes with um, your projects in, in Brazil and South Africa. What, what kind of impact do you expect this to have on, on your business? Um, certainly, uh, in terms of long-term iron ore prices, uh, we'd expect the long-term price to be probably around $60 to $70 a tonne. It's a bit over $100 a tonne today. We've got a very high-quality product, so very much in demand. Uh, the quality of our product from South Africa and from Brazil is high quality, much higher than what we see come out of the Pilbara today. And so by 2025, let's say iron ore prices are back to uh, long-term levels, it impacts us maybe 5 or 10%. But don't forget, we're growing in a whole range of other commodities. 
whereas the two big players rely on iron ore. So I think you'll see a big shift in terms of value and value appreciation towards us as our other commodities come into play and, and the big players get hit on the iron ore price. Mark, you've outlined plans to spin off your thermal coal business in South Africa. That will leave you with only one left in Colombia. It's really a cliff edge moment for the coal business. This is the most polluting fuel, and it's very hard to get rid of these coal mines because of the price. How do you plan to exit or sell this business? So we think the best pathway is to demerge. Now, you have to remember that we've already reduced our thermal coal business by over 55%. We sold our seats a few years back uh, in a much better market, obviously. Um, today, thermal coal only represents 5% of our earnings and at these prices, probably a little bit less. So it's not a big issue for us. It's a demerger and we move on. Don't forget, uh, we purchased the Woodsmith or the Sirius polyhalide business, which we think is fantastic. So we're moving out of thermal coal and we're building a business that's probably twice the size and twice the contribution that thermal coal was so we think we've made a good or we've done a good trade uh, in terms of our shareholders and we think the prognosis going forward is very strong in the crop nutrient side so we're shifting the portfolio and it's very much future based. I want to finally ask you about the dollar, Mark. We're seeing it now continue um, to weaken. And if it does, is that good for your business? Are you happy about that? And what's your outlook for, for the dollar? Look, we, we think there will be some weakness based on um, financial performance. But the U.S. will pick back up and recover, we think, later in the year. But, um, you know, it's going to be a bumpy ride for a little bit longer. Yes, it helps us, but in the end, uh, we want to see the U.S. strong. Um, everyone is better off if the U.S. economy is doing well. We're growing. The globe's growing. We're, we're all a lot better with the U.S. in good shape. So we hope it picks up quickly.